This is the Prince Charles Cinema just off Leicester Square in the heart of the West End of London and tonight there is a screening of 2001 A Space Odyssey in 70mm from a 50th anniversary print which importantly means it is a pre-restoration print. Our projectionist is Svein, originally from Oslo in Norway who covers weekends at the Prince Charles and has done so for about three years now. He's a true film enthusiast and it's therefore no surprise that projecting this 70mm print of 2001 A Space Odyssey is his favourite print to put on screen. Did you train in Norway or was this...? I trained in Norway before the digitization. Right, just then, in time. The, yeah, but there, there I only did 35mm. Right. And digital. So my first 70 was here. This is quite a compact machine, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's a lovely little machine, this here. Cine Mechanico ZX8000. What's the soundtrack on this? So this, this print is, uh, is the 50th anniversary re-release. Right, the, BTS. The, un, the unrestored BTS prints. There's still six channels, as the original version was. Yeah, I'm just going to run a focus loop so that yeah. it starts in focus. Spain has threaded up a loop of film here which is used to check the images in focus all the way across the screen from left to right and from top to bottom. Good enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this print of 2001 come from? Does the Prince Charles own it? We don't, we, don't, we don't own it, but no. we book it often enough so we never right. send it back. <laughs> what a good plan. Because we run it every three months. So this print has only left the building once. Since, uh, since the 50th since, anniversary. Since 2018. Right. And yeah, so we run it all the time. <laughs> we had another small group of visitors to the projection box while we were there, and one of whom was a young lady who had worked in a cinema in Oslo with Svein years before. Svein has shown her the same threading up procedure for the day's previous screening, which was a 35mm print of Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. They show a lot of film here and they get good audiences as a result. It's like a non-stop film festival every day.
rack. Right. <laughs> so this is the DTS reader up here. DTS, yeah. A lot, a lot of people who watch these videos don't understand why there are all these rollers and, and it's just to guide it into the projector, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, and guiding it back onto the platter. Yeah, and that, that device that you use in the platter, what's that called? Uh, that's the brain unit. Right. Uh, you... I, I personally call it just the feed unit. Which uh, is probably a better name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you use this for 35 mil as well as Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Just before the screening, I showed a 35 mil print of Stanley Kubrick's to kill So I just had like 10 minutes to to convert the projector to 70. I'm gonna close the tabs now if you want to move the lens. Beautiful. This is the DTS reader, and nice. the, like the soundtrack has already been preloaded. Right. So we don't need the discs anymore, but we have the discs uh, somewhere in the back here, just in case we need to reload it. But it should be fine. Mm -hmm. So we've been running it like this for like many years now. Svein is now putting the very long leader onto the take-up platter. Leader and lead-out is on every single reel of film and is primarily to facilitate the lacing up process. When a platter system is used, they are sometimes so far away from the projector that additional leader is required. But the point I really want to make here is that this is leader and not the image area of the film itself because I know some people get upset about seeing a film on the floor when in fact the leader is there for just this sort of purpose and therefore to protect the main film print. There's a lot to projecting a film, it's all quite technical and the projectionist certainly does have to know what he or she is doing. It's not quite the same as video projection when all you really have to know is how to push some buttons. What we are seeing here is the art of film projection. Do you think you've run this print yourself? Probably just like 10. ten around times. 10 times. I'm only here on the weekends, so I don't run the weekday shows. Oh, right. But it's my favorite print to run. And then it was time for us to get down into the auditorium to watch the film. This is screen one in the Prince Charles, and it's an old school cinema with staff and projectionists who clearly love film. This attracts an audience made up of film enthusiasts and when you see the tabs open perfectly in times of the film appearing on screen it tells me that I'm in the right place to see a film. To see 2001 as it really was in 70mm is special, perhaps even more special for me because this pre-restoration print had the evidence of being struck from the most popular 70mm negative in history. I was expecting it to look completely knackered, but that wasn't the case. The neg damage that was apparent on occasion was only on odd frames here and there, but I enjoyed seeing that. The clarity was beautiful, but the real standout was the colour and the density. Cinemas really should get back to projecting film where possible. The sound was very good too, but above all else, seeing 2001 in a packed house full of enthusiasts was the most special thing of all. 
The next time I see this film, it's going to have to be on a genuine Cinerama screen, and that's probably the only thing that will ever beat the 70mm screenings at the Prince Charles. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.